two American League teams. We'll see the Baltimore Orioles as they play against the Chicago White Sox. Major League Baseball, live on 2K Sports. And hello again, everybody. Last week of August, and we welcome you to 2K Sports Baseball. Gary Thorne, John Crux, Steve Phillips. A look at Carlos Quentin, no doubt getting ready for some offensive punch. U.S. Cellular Field on the south side in Chicago with the White Sox. And it'll be the right-hander, Eric Bedard, our starting pitcher. What is it about this Baltimore lineup that they'll be looking for from him today? Well, veteran left-hander Eric Bedard out on the mound. He's been hampered by injuries in recent past, but when he's healthy, he's productive. Quality, command of the fastball, outstanding breaking pitch, and a feel for the changeup. As a hitter, you have to be ready for all the different pitches. Time for the Pepsi starting lineup. Here's how the Orioles look. Thoughts, John? Anybody stand up? Well, you see in this lineup here today, Luke Scott is in there. And he's a guy that you have to pick and choose when you want to play. He's not a guy that if you give 600 at bats to, he's going to be more productive. He's the kind of guy that needs a break every once in a while. And when he's rested, he can produce. He's a guy that can put the ball in play. He can hit for power. Not a great average hitter, but he will get on base. Let's see if he can do it here today. And we've got his Torres batting. Last outing for the White Sox proved to be a win. They put together win after win. Now they got seven in a row going. Well, I'll tell you what, these guys are red hot right now. They've rattled off seven straight wins, and they'll be looking for numero ocho here in this one. That one's drilled to short. One away now. And now's a good time to take a brief look how the White Sox stack up defensively. Uh -huh. Steve, anyone in particular we should keep an eye on? Well, they're confident with Alex Rios out there. Just a solid all-around defender with a strong throwing arm. He's a quality defensive player. Tejada at the plate. Now coming off a good ball game last night, picking up two hits in that one. Base is empty with one away. And here's the pitch. Oh! That curve is just a little bit outside. One ball, no strikes. Well, this guy is a classic finesse pitcher with one of the best curveballs in the league. And Tejada wow. makes good contact here. This one beyond him. It's going to be extra bases. He's going to try to stretch it. He's not stopping there. He's on his way to third. Now batting. Well, he shoots this one out towards the wall, and he's thinking triple all the way. No hesitation running the bases. He cuts them perfectly. And with one out, let's see how they're going to pitch to the next guy. It's going to be Weeders. Man on third with one away. And Bernard has him 0 and 1. That one a called strike. I think the hitter was looking for something out over the plate that he could drive. They pounded a fastball down and in for a strike. Strike two. No balls. Two strikes. Matt Wieters. Watch that strike zone. The hitter needs a two-strike approach. Shorten up the swing. Think about going the other way. Back behind second. Two retired here. Now batting for the Baltimore Orioles. Left fielder, number 30. Who's Scott in the batter's box? I've got to be feeling good today. Picked up a couple hits in the game last night. And Bernard has him 0 and 1. That one a called strike. Here it comes. And here's a swing and a miss, and he falls behind 0 and 2. He delivers. Can't connect on that. Scott, a big nut up him. They get a man to third, but can't bring him home. And the White Sox, their first chance has come. Pitching Koji Uehara. He's going to start for Baltimore. Number eight. And he gets going against these White Sox hitters. What do you think's in store? Koji Uehara has an unbelievable changeup. That's what you're going to notice here. But for that to be effective, he's going to have to command his fastball. If he doesn't do that, it takes away the effectiveness of the changeup. And it's Johnny Damon, one of the best batting averages in the league. First pitch on the way to Damon. Starts him out with a fork ball for a strike. Just a solid offensive player day in and day out. And a guy that uh, really can deliver for this offense. Strike two. Strike two. No balls. Two strikes. Veteran Damon, though, 
He'll cut it down and try to just poke it out there. Now coming up in this situation, last night took advantage of mistake pitch, so he's swinging a bat and has some confidence right now. And Jones takes care of that one. One away. Boy, he got a pitch to hit right there, but just a little bit out in front. Sends an easy fly ball to center field for the out. Here's the pitch. Line towards second. And that's in there. The White Sox get a man on. And it's up against the wall. And he's in at second with a double. One up. Well, he finds the pitch he can drive, and his hands just fly through the strike zone. Perfect execution at the plate. He's in scoring position with just one out. Paul Canarco to the plate, runner in scoring position. He's the league leader in ribbies. First pitch, and he misses the fastball, strike one. He deals. Now swing and a shot towards second. And Canerco retired. Line up for the White Sox. Let's take a look. It is courtesy of Pike. Scouting report, John. How about some picks? Well, when you think of Paul Canerco, you think of reliability. He's a guy that year in and year out you can count on, and he produces for you. And in this game today, they are definitely going to count on him to do some big things. And don't be surprised if he comes through. RBI opportunity right here for Carlos Quinton. Leading the MLB in batting average. Man on third, two outs. There's a swing and a long high drive. Still going back. And so they jump out to the 2 nothing lead. Wow, what a great time for a two-run shot like that. Oh, look at the chance of winning on our two-run homer, courtesy of our WPA Pepsi Graham. A great piece of hitting right there. He turns on that one, rotates the hips, and drives the ball. And that's going to give them the lead here, and an early lead. I'm going to see if they can tack on a few more here in the first and put the pressure. Well, that's what you want. Run support for your pitching and attack the opposition. That's what the White Sox are doing right here. Has him out in front as he swings and misses strike one. And we've got offense here in the first inning just the way they wanted to start this ball game. Now the pitching's going to have to settle down here. Now I know it's early, but you don't want this thing to spiral out of control. Here's the pitch. Oh, tough one to lay off right there, that fastball. One and two. The one two pitch. Change up got him and the side is retired. And so we get our first two runs in the first. Offense getting going early. The White Sox lead it two to nothing. For those of you just joining in, I'm Gary Thorne along with John Cruck and Steve Phillips. We bring you Major League Baseball here on 2K Sports. And Wigginton's batting, hitting 230 lifetime against the White Sox. The dart gets him to swing and a miss for a strike. Something off that time in control with the count now 0 and 2. Swung on and hit. It's going to be Quentin. And he makes the catch one down. There's a look at the standings in the Eastern Division as we head towards September. Looking at the State Farm standings board. Red Sox in first place. In second place, the Yankees. In the three hole, it's the Orioles. Rays are fourth and it's the Blue Jays last and we've got Jones batting 
Nobody on base, one away. Bedard gets set and delivers. Strike one! And it's a called strike to Jones. No balls, one strike. Here's Bedard. Fouled off. Liner towards the hole, and Conurco makes the catch. Let's take a chance now to take a look at where the White Sox sit today in the rankings in the American League. First in batting average, first in batting average with runners in scoring position, and they're also number one in ERA. Their pitching staff getting it done better than everybody else right now. You limit the run scored, you give yourself a chance to win. And Aubrey at the plate. Batting 250 lifetime, 3 for 12 record against the White Sox. Takes that first pitch low in the strike zone, strike one. Velocity and location are absolutely critical. That pitch was exactly where he wanted to throw it. Ball. Oh, and he lays off the fastball. Good pitch, one and one. Headed for the middle, and Ramirez fields the ball. Throws to first in time. That's three down. No runs, no hits, no one left on. The shutout is still in progress here at U.S. Cellular Field. Do up six, seven, eight in the lineup. And Alex Surios to lead off. And uh, at the plate, oh, the tops and runs scored. Top five. Didn't get around in time. 0-1. Uh, Gary, he, he can really swing the bat. Just a quality approach at the plate, day in and day out. That consistency is critical to their success. Strike That's two. a strike, and it's 0-2. Time for Rios now to protect. Well, great movement on that two-seamer right there. Had him way out on his front foot. He swings and drives this one. And Jones takes care of that one. This is what the schedule looks like for Baltimore. One game left for the White Sox. That's tomorrow. And then they'll be off to take on the Angels in that bat of Bobby Abreu. A little chance for payback there, a team that beat them the last time out. It will be a three game series. And then they'll be going up against Kevin Euclid and the Red Sox. Boy, there's some great competition in that set of games. It's going to be Przinski. He's in the top echelon of hits right now. One out, nobody on. Here's the delivery. Hit sharply down the line. It's a fair ball headed into the corner for extra bases. And he pulls into second base. That will be a double. Well, one of the offensive leaders in the game this year, and obviously a guy who's getting the job done for this offense, is somebody they've really come to rely upon. Well, this pitch right here catches way too much of the play, and he absolutely demolishes it. Let's see what they want to do here with one out and a base open. The pitch. Oh, it was a little early that time, 0 1. He clearly had a shot at hitting for the cycle last time out. Got the triple, which is the toughest. Hit the ball out of the ballpark for a home run. Got a single, but just lacked the double. Couldn't get it done. Still 0-2. Liner towards the hole. That one threads the needle. That's a base hit. Tremendous situation now for the White Sox. Steve looked like that was a strike. Ball was up high, but I think in the zone. Well, up and away, but on an 0-2 count, you're thinking, I need to make contact. Exceptional job of eye-hand coordination. And as Jim told me in the box now, and right now, top five and runs batted in in the lead. Swings hits this one pretty well. Deep right center. Here comes the runner for the plate. And Pierzynski comes in. 
Well, he got a pitch to hit over the heart of the plate, right at the belt. He drove it, didn't get the base hit, but at least advanced the runner. Did get something out of it. I, I'm sure he'd like to have that pitch back. That was one he, he really had a shot at driving. Runner on first now for Johnny Damon. Just one player picking up after another, Steve. This is this is a good offensive show going on, and they're climbing the ladder with it. Oh, that last hit puts a little bit more daylight in this lead right now, Gary. They keep tacking on early. Uh, and he can't catch up with that one. 0 oh, and 1. Not a comfortable lead yet, but it's uh, an early statement. Well, it's a statement that says, you know what? We're going to score some runs for our, our guy and putting pressure on the opposition's offense. You're out. Strike three. Damon on a swing and a miss turned away. So they score once on two hits, one man left. White Sox up three. And if you're just joining our 2K Sports Major League Baseball broadcast with John Crock and Steve Phillips, I'm Gary Thorne. He's going to start the third here. Bedard gets him to swing and a miss for a strike. Credit the catcher on that one. That's a good low target setting up, and he hit the target. Good execution. Mm -hmm. Gets him to commit to that pitch, and he's down 0-2. Well, that pitch right there, he just blew it right by the hitter. Swung late. Here's the pitch. Swing and a miss. That's a changeup. Down on strikes, one up. Well, you like to see your pitcher strike guys out. You like to see him keep the pitch count down. He did both. Big smile in the dugout over there. That's a domination in that effort by the pitcher. Base is empty with one away. Strike Fastball one. swung out and missed. 0 1. One pitch of fastball swung out and missed 0 and 2. Now Przinski sets up. Swings lines this one softly to right. That looks like a single. And that's going to bring Cesar Torres in. Grounded out his last time through. One out man on first. Here's the first pitch. Ball one. Bedard gets set and delivers. Strike one. And he looks at a slider that's in there. One and one. Down, down, down. It's all about location. That breaking ball down in the zone makes it very difficult on the hit. Swing and a miss on that fastball, and it's one and two. Swing and a hot shot. That gets down. That'll put him on the tying run up. That'll bring Miguel Tejada up. He takes this one two pitch down in the zone. He's able to go down and get it. Get a good part of the bat on the ball and pick up the base hit. That's a tough pitch to hit. When you're behind in the count, you just want contact, and he got it. He's got the best average in the division. Over to first and safe. Very close play. They will not get the double play. It's going to be Weeders. 21 lifetime ABs. Two hits of the White Sox. Now the first pitch. Oh! And it goes foul. Swing and a rocket toward short. And that ends the half inning as Ramirez makes the play. No runs and a couple of hits and two left on. Baltimore still hoping to put something up. Two hole to get things started next. There was a look at Ozzy. Ozzy Gian. Now he has to be happy with the work on the mound, especially that last inning. Insurance run so important. And it's Alexei Ramirez now to lead it off. He's number one in runs scored in the league.
And here's the first one. Brings and misses at the fastball, 0 and 1. Just a solid offensive player, day in and day out, and a guy that uh, really can deliver for this offense. Taps this one foul to the right. Here's the pitch. Big swing and a miss on the heater. Strike him out one down. Check out the movement on this on K Cam. Clocks in at 85 miles per hour. Two straight fastballs. He still couldn't catch up with it. Well, the pitcher comes back with a fastball right after he threw one and gets the K. You know he's throwing gas out there. And here's Paul Canerco. He's the league leader in hits. Here's the first pitch. Ball! Mm, uh, did not get the call on that fourth ball, and it's 1-0. Now the 1 0 pitch. Hit hard to second. Oh, Two down. For the Chicago White Sox. Right That's a big time power Number hitters 20. right here. Some guys that look Carlos to drive the ball out of the ballpark and swing hard in case they hit it. And when they make contact, they can do some serious damage. Carlos Quentin at the plate with two away. He homered earlier in the ballgame. And he's swinging the bat very well today and doing a little bit of everything. Driving in runs, hitting the ball out of the ballpark, having a good ballgame. First pitch to Quinton. Oh, to fish for that one, nothing and one. Now picked up three big base hits in the game last night, swinging the bat very well. Swing and a line drive down the left field line. And this rolls all the way to the wall. He's going to try and test him here. That's going to bring Gordon Beckham. Now breaking down Carlos Quentin's season so far. I wonder how he stacks up compared to everybody else. First in batting average, first in hits. And he's also leading the league in home runs. That power bat, that ability to hit it out of the ballpark, a major power threat every time he comes to the plate. A runner on first with two outs. And here's the first one. Wings at that fastball and misses. 0 and 1. Boy, that's some kind of fastball down in the zone right there. The hitter has to be ready for it, or he's got no chance to hit it. Here's the delivery. Can't get him to chase the fastball. Low, one and two. One two pitch coming. A swing line to left center. And it falls in. Hitting streak continues. This is a great situation for some offense. Center fielder. He takes this one-two pitch down in the zone. He's able to go down and get it. Get a good part of the bat on the ball and pick up the base hit. That's a tough pitch to hit. When you're behind in the count, you just want contact, and he got it. Reaches out for that one. He's behind on the count on one. Well, it's tough to tell a hitter to stay back on a fastball, but this is what he needs to do. He's jumping out, trying to get to it, and he's just way out in front. And Alex Rios has struck out a big swing and a miss. They get two men in scoring position. Couple of hits. Can't get them home, though. Up next, Orioles. Scott in the batter's box. And he gets them walked a lot. The American League has him in the top five. Here's the first pitch. There is a swing and a liner, and it's caught by Ramirez. Here's the Central Division race with September just around the corner. Looking at the State Farm standings board, first place the White Sox, second place the Royals, third place goes to the Indians. In the fourth spot, it's the Twins, and rounding out the list, the Tigers. The Chicago White Sox on fire right now, back from the dead. They couldn't do anything right before, and now they're doing everything right. First pitch on the way. And Bernard has him 0 1. That one a called strike. Look, okay, you're into the fourth inning right here now. They, they've got three hits in this one, so they've had a few base runners, but they haven't been able to lump them together to be able to generate any runs so far. 0 1 is a slider. First call strike. The pitcher's way ahead. He's got some room here now to play with some pitches, 
Don't be too fine giving him something. Hit up the middle. Beckham. And Wigginton set down. Boy, he made that throw a split second before he lost control of the body. Now, the key was he kept his eye on the target the entire time. Big smile, he got that one done. And we've got Jones batting. 0 for 1 thus far. Base is empty with two up. Bedard gets set and delivers. On the ground to short. He'll throw on to first, and that'll do it for this half inning. Quick half inning there. It's over five pitches. The White Sox still ahead. It's going to be Brzezinski, and one of the top ten averages right now. A.J. Brzezinski. The first pitch. Swing and a drive. Deep left center. This one to Jones. And he meanders over to put it away. Now the teams that have been finding their way on base are State Farm Leaderboard on base percentage for the last 10. The White Sox number one. The Orioles second. In third, the A's. Fourth, the Angels. And at number five on the list, the Rays. Well, I tell you, when you watch these two teams play over the last 10 days, there seems to be a fight at the bat rack. Everyone wants to get up because they know they're going to get on base. Ball lifted high in the air. Deep down the line and right. Tell it goodbye. Add one more to that lead. Fly ball out of here for them. You know, Gary, they're not bunching them together. That is the second home run they've hit off him in this game. You may be taking a look at a sequence of pitchers right now. Well, they're going to have to get it together with the pitcher and catcher. Now, White Sox lead expanding here, Gary. They just keep getting big hits. David Hitter. Number 27, Jim. One out, faces him. Swing and a miss. Tommy, strike one. And Steve, you give up that big fly ball. Now trailing further in this one. Pitching's got to find a way to shut this down right now. Oh, that's right. Listen, now with the bases empty, you've got to get in your mind that you're starting over and get out. Change up, swung on and missed. That'll be out number two. That's some kind of break right there for an 80 mile an hour breaking ball. That's tough to do. That much break for that much velocity. Tough pitch. He pulled the string right there. Must have been looking for the fastball. Swings right through the changeup for strike three. And it's Johnny Damon now. Right there in the top five in home runs. First pitch on the way to Damon. Fly ball deep left, but it'll end up in the seats foul. Here's the pitch. Strike two. No balls. Two strikes. Veteran Damon, though, he'll cut it down and try to just poke it out there. There's a swing and a ball hit high into the air. Deep to right field. Gone. Goodbye home run. And one more to that lead. Solo. Big fly ball up by five. He's been chosen to take over out there. Gary, I tell you, I probably would have let this starter go a little bit longer. I mean, better safe than sorry, but why burn the bullpen this early in the game if you don't have to? Save them, keep them fresh, make them right. Here's a swing and a liner to left center. And in there, he's two for three today. And that'll bring up Hope and Erica. Well, he's having some kind of offensive season, Gary, really in the middle of everything this team's doing offensively. And he hits the ball. Right now he leads the AL. Runner on first, two away. And he starts Canerco out. First pitch is a changeup for a called strike. Such a consistent, productive, professional hitter. You know, one of their best bats in the lineup, Gary. And Paul Canerco watching that one go by to even the count up. Over his lifetime, 293 off Baltimore. 
Smash towards the middle. And Canerco's got himself a single. Tremendous situation now for the White Sox. Well, a key contributor in that last win. Three big hits in that game. And he's seeming to find a way again to get it started. And it's Carlos Quinton in the box now. He singled his last trip. Quality, productive at bats, driving in a run. And then the big home run as well. So their team's winning. He's been a big part of the production. Two down. Runners at first and second. And here's the first one. That swung on and a liner here. And another one. It's contagious. Good offensive chance here. Well, he's having a heck of a day so far. Just third hit of the game in this one. They just can't seem to find an answer for him. And Beckham's in the box. And he'll be looking to pad the lead a bit here. When you get these kinds of opportunities, you have to capitalize on it to swing the bat. And the pitcher's really got to bear down now. Strike two. Gordon Beckham now will have to keep an eye out on the strike zone. Struck him out. He gets out of this with just a little hurt. So they get the long ball working as they have two solo homers in this half of the inning. White Sox, they've got a commanding five-run lead. And Aubrey at the plate. First base, number nine, Michael Aubrey. Bedard gets set and delivers. Swing and a foul straight back. Swung on and hit. It's going to be Quentin. That one falls in there for a base hit. Up to the plate Already the nearing the end of player. August and courtesy of State Farm. Leader. Let's Number see how the American League wildcard race is matching up. Yankees in first place. Mariners in second place. Orioles third place. Rays are fourth. Fifth place the Royals. And down at the bottom the Texas Rangers. Well, I've got such a great race right now for the wild card of the American League. And these teams are going to be playing playoff baseball all the way down to game 162 which has set them up nicely for playoff baseball. And Eric Bedard delivers strike two. He's in control in this A.B. Well outstanding pitching effort so far here. I mean he's left three runners on base in this game. I mean but he's just shutting down this lineup and when he needs to make a pitch he seems to always find a way to do it. Bedard gets set and delivers. Foul. And that's another foul ball. Well, the pitcher did exactly what he wanted to do on that 0 2 count. He wanted him to swing the bat, and he did, but he just fouled it off. Great piece foul. of hitting. And he fouls off another one. Curveball got him one away. That's a hard fighting curveball right there with the great, great, awfully tough to put in play. Swung right through it. Rookie right fielder stands in. He's one for one so far. Runner at first with one down. And the first pitch. Wings and misses at the curve, 0 and 1. Well, not a whole lot you can do when a pitcher's locating that curveball down in the strike zone. There's just not a lot for the hitter to get accomplished with that swing. You just hope to foul it off, and he makes a mistake with the next one. Fastball got him two down. Now we're going to get a chance, Gary, to see the four-seam fastball in KG. Well, he just looked overpowered on those two fastballs. John thought the uh, timing that time just didn't seem to be there. In the well, and a, and a strikeout like that will give the pitcher a lot of confidence. Two outs and a man on first. First pitch on the way. Oh. Way out there with the curveball, 1-0. and oh. Three big hits in that game last night, and they'd love to get that contribution again today. Here's Bedard with a 1-0 pitch. 
Beckham throws to second. That'll be a force out and the third out. No runs, one hit, and no one left on base. The shutout is still in progress here at U.S. Cellular Field. And if you just joined our broadcast, great to have you on board. 2K Sports Major League Baseball, I'm Gary Thorne with Steve Phillips and John Crook. And Alex Rios to lead off. Top five AL in run scored. And he starts Rios out. Line shot into center field. One away now. Now a chance to check out the league hit leaders brought to you by State Farm. Brzezinski. It's going to be Przinski, and he's in the top ten in the league and runs. One out, nobody on. He deals. This one's pretty well hit to deep left center. It's off the wall and a hop. And he's in at second with the double. One out. Martin looking to knock in a run. He's a big home run guy. Top 10 in the league right now. Swing and a drive. Deep left center. All the way to the wall. There's the throw. And Pierzynski comes in. He's getting done all season long, Gary. The guy that really looking to count him. Number 27. Well, a guy that just continues to swing the bat well in this ball game. Three hits right now so far. And it comes with one out in the inning. Can it start a rally? And it's Jim Tomey at the plate. And they've not had to struggle here at the plate in this. That one swung on, hit in the air, deep to left field. He has to back up for it. Comes away with the out. Now the runner will have to hold at second. Now the State Farm leaderboard. Who has the power bats this month? Well, this is a list of guys that when they get in there, they're looking to do some damage to really hurt the opposition. Looking to drive the ball. It's not just about contact. It's about hard contact. So Johnny Damon thinks RBI in the top ten in hits. Runner in scoring position at second with two down. First pitch on the way to Damon. That fastball gets by him on the first pitch. 0 and 1. Uh, one thing they know they can count on in this lineup is his bat. He has been so consistently good. Damon will foul that one away. Swing and a ball hit well down the right field line into the corner. Goodbye, a two-run homer. Two-run homer just adds to a terrific hitting game they've had. Pitch headed down and in, but somehow he's able to catch up to it. A tough pitch. You really have to have a quick bat to get to that one. Man, I don't know how you get a two-run homer on a pitch like that. Two-run homer, huh? Yeah, they have not figured out a way how to shut down this White Sox offense today. They look so good. Two outs, space is empty. And Ramirez settles in, first pitch. Swings and misses the slider. 0 and 1. Well, you viewers at home, if you'd like to see a lot of fireworks, hang in because right now it's just all over this yard. Now the power being shown off here, another home run, and it's a highlight reel of power. Got him, and they're able to avert any more damage. Side retired. So they strike for three more runs here and widen that lead even further. White Sox continue to run away with this ball game. Miguel Tejada at the plate. One for two in the ball game. Number 10, Miguel Tejada.
Bedard gets set and delivers. He makes contact, line drive. And Canerco makes the catch. It's going to be Wieters. Nobody on base, one away. And here's the first one. And Bedard has him 0 and 1. That one a called strike. Boy, good pitching, good defense. They're getting it done today, and obviously limiting this offense, keeping them off the board. Only three guys left on base the entire game. And he'll just keep it himself, tagging for the out. Left fielder, number 30, Luke Scott. And here's Luke Scott. In the top 10 in walks, not a bad list. Base is empty and two down. First one to Scott, the delivery. Strike and one. Bernard has him 0 and 1. That one a called strike. I uh, so patience at the plate, and that, that patience can rub off on the rest of the lineup. We've seen that with his team, Gary. Strike Check two. swing on that pitch, but it found the zone anyway. 0 and 2. Got him. And he has just been magnificent through six. Still got outs to get Steve, but he's in this one. Now, Gary, he's got his great stuff and his great location. So they can't push across any runs. They've been shut out through the first six. Baltimore's still hoping to put something up. The American League and runs batted in. 14, Paul Canerco. He delivers. Well hit towards the middle. And it gets through a two for four ball game. These are the hot bats right now. The highest batting average over the last 10 days. Courtesy of State Farm. Number All of these guys quality contact hitters. And, you know, when you're that kind of a hitter, it means that you can hit any kind of pitch the pitcher throws, and you're using the whole field. You're hitting it where it's pitched. That's going to bring Carlos Quinton up. Just a solid offensive player day in and day out, and a guy that uh, really can deliver for this offense. Runner on first base, nobody out. First pitch to Quinton. Just missed with the fastball. 1 0. His career average, a solid 351 lifetime off the Orioles. Lined right at the second baseman. The second, there's one. And that's two. A double play. That Keystone area can get a little rough, Steve. Nice turn on the double play. Just the way they draw it up. Great pivot by the shortstop. And Beckham's in the box. Struck out swinging his last time up. Base is empty with two up. First pitch on the way. Strike one in front on that one. Strike one. And here's the pitch. And he leaves that one alone. Gordon Beckham showing patience. That'll even up the count. Here it comes. And here's a swing and a miss. He couldn't get that one. One and two. Well, if you're going to get a good fastball, you better pull the trigger a little sooner. You can't be late on that heater. Fastball swung out and missed, and the side's retired. Seven pitches, and it's done. That's how you save your arm and go deep into a game. The White Sox eight. Baltimore none. And if you are just coming on board, Gary Thorne, Steve Phillips, John Crook, as we bring you Major League Baseball here on 2K Sports. And Wigginton's batting. He'll lead off the seventh inning. Here's the first pitch. Shot towards the hole. And Conerco makes the catch. We have said it more than once today, but he continues to look extremely sharp, Steve. He's so locked in. You, you wonder how long he can keep it going. I haven't seen anybody pitch like this in a long time. Right. 
strike. And there's a called strike. A tremendous effort out on the mound in this one. We're deep into the ball game. I mean, we're getting close to the end of this one. They've only been able to get four hits against him, and he shut them down and kept them off the scoreboard. And Eric Bedard delivers strike two. He's in control in this A.B. The hitter's got to protect the outer part of the plate right here, down 0-2. Oh, not a pretty pitch, no damage. And it's fouled off. And the one two pitch from Bedard. Ground ball headed for the middle. And Jones sat down. For the Baltimore Orioles, first baseman. And Aubrey at the plate. He had a single in his last time up. Two outs and nobody on. Now the first pitch. And he checks his swing there, but it's in there for a strike on one. Bedard gets set and delivers. On the ground to short. Fielded by Ramirez. Throws on to first side is retired. Man, oh man, is he on a roll on the mound, Steve. You can tell by his eyes he's completely locked in right now in absolute control. The shutout is still in progress here at U.S. Cellular Field. And Alex Rios up. Center fielder. Number 51. Alex Rios. And he starts Rios up. Change up just misses. 1 0. Oh. 1 0 oh now. Hit up the middle. Nope. That one right off the pitcher. That's one away. But a quick recovery that time gets the out. AJ Brzezinski. It's going to be Brzezinski. He doubled at his last appearance. Base is empty, one out. First pitch, here it comes. Now swing and a shot toward second. Two away. Just take a look at the Baltimore Orioles and how they're ranking in the American League right now. Third in doubles, third in batting average, and they're ranked third in hits. A lineup that seems to find the holes necessary to get runners on base and keep the pressure on the opposition. Two outs, space is empty. And the first pitch. Hit up the middle. And it's in there. He continues to get on base. That's hit number four in this game. So Jim tell me coming up. Well, they just can't figure out a way to get this guy out. That's now four hits for him in this game. Two outs and a man on first. Tomei gets in. Here's the first deliver. Swinging and a miss, and he falls behind on the count on one. Two outs in this inning, but a man on first base. And Gary, you know, they, they've just got to find a way to get it out. Get a ground ball. Swing, hot shot, and it gets down. The streak is on. Now State Farm brings you the league leaderboard. Here's who's getting the most extra base hits. Number 18, Johnny Damon. Two on and a couple down. Here's Johnny Damon. He's already homered twice in this one. I okay, they're having a big offensive day. I think that's pretty obvious, but clearly one of the major components of this offense are his at bats. I mean, two home runs. He's swinging the bat very well. Looks so comfortable at the plate. On the way. Here's one hit very well deep. This one to Jones. And he's there to retire the sun. So, no runs, two hits, and they strand two. Up next, Orioles. Taking a look there, Dave Tremblay. He knows he's going to have to get more innings like that last one and have some production to tie this one up. 
Here's the first pitch. Bedard gets him to swing and a miss for a strike. Well, holding them scoreless so far in this one and only allowed four hits, Gary. And I think a real credit to what he's been able to do. Outstanding work between the pitcher and catcher. Just a great plan of attack. Pitch on the way. And it holds at 0-2. And that's another foul ball. Well, the battle starts when you step in the batter's box, but the real battle starts when the count is 0-2, and that's where he sees himself. But give him credit. He's keeping himself alive by fouling off that tough 0-2 pitch on the outside part of the plate. Let's see if he can make the pitcher make a mistake. Five pitches to get the job done. Pretty fine sequence. That was a great sequence of pitches, and as a hitter, you know you, every time you go up there, you want to try to get a hit or at least make the pitcher work. This one here didn't get it done. First pitch to him. Swings and grounds this one foul wide of third. It's your turn, White Sox. The pitch. A swing and a fly ball to left center field. And it gets down. That's hit number now two, making good contact. And that's going to bring Cesar Astoris up. They tried to go down with that 0 1 pitch, but it gets blasted right back for the base hit. But the way he went after that in the box, Steve, it looked like he might have been guessing down there. Well, I'll tell you what, you have to make contact behind in the count. He got a pitch over the heart of the plate, and he took advantage of it. Right. Fastball in there for a called strike. Well, the pitcher going for that hole and most hitters swing up and in. He found that strike zone with a four-seam fastball, and he couldn't get to it. He's up with it. Oh, that's one out. And a double play. They got him both. He's got eight shutout innings under his belt. All he has to do is keep his focus and composure in the night. The White Sox maintaining their lead. Number two hole set to get things started. And it's Alexei Ramirez now to lead it off. Number 10, Alexei Ramirez. And Ramirez settles in. First pitch. Can't connect. It's 0-1. This one's grounded hard up the middle. One away. The teams who have been reaching home the most over the past 10, courtesy of State Farm. The White Sox, number one. The Rays in second. In third, the Angels. The Orioles, fourth. And we've got the Rangers. They are fifth. Well, there are stretches during the season when every team struggles to score runs. But these two teams right now in these last 10 games have found a way to be able to throw runners across the board. They are doing it in every single way conceivably possible. Shot back to first. And he's not able to get there. This one finds its way around, rolling all the way to the wall. And he'll stop at second base, and it will be a double. Right fielder, number 20, Carlos Brinkin. Well, anytime you're a hitter and you can get three hits in a game, you're going to see that average start creeping up to where you want it to be. And he's on now with one out. One out with a runner at second. First pitch to Quinton. Fastball swung out and missed. 0-1. Well, the pitching hasn't gotten it done and in a little bit of a jam again here. So it doesn't matter what we're doing out there. They just the offense keeps on rolling. Oh, swing and a miss on a pitch that's in the dirt. Did not look good on that cut. The pitch. You're out. Strike three. Went on a swing and a miss. He's out. Boy, this is a spot for a three-pitch strikeout. Well, it is. And when you have runners in scoring position, that's when you want to be your nastiest, and that's what he was. And Beckham's in the box. Runner on second and two outs. First pitch. Got on and missed on one. Well, that's a pretty good pitch right there. He got that slider in the strike zone. He got the hitter out in front to swing early. Strike, strike two. Gordon Beckham now will have to keep an eye out on the strike zone.
putt shot towards the hole. That one gets through for a base hit. Now back for the Chicago. That's a really good pitch, Steve, with an 0-2 offering to keep that down and in. That's a perfect pitcher's pitch. At this point, you've got to tip your hat to the batter. That's a solid job. So Alex Rios, he'll try and keep it going. He'll be seeking his first hit right here. Here's the first pitch. Here's a swing and a line drive. Wigginton pulls that one in. No runs and a couple of hits and two left on. The White Sox eight. Baltimore nothing. Quick glimpse of the manager, Ozzie Guillen. Great game his club has put together. Things have gone really well. Miguel Tejada at the plate. He'll start us out here in the last inning of regulation. First pitch to Tejada. Line softly to center field. And that does get down. Tejada's got first. That'll bring up Matt Wieters. Here's a look at what's coming up for the White Sox. The series with Baltimore concludes tomorrow. And they'll be up against A Rod, Alex Rodriguez, and the Yankees. The team they rolled over last time out. That's a three game series. And then they'll grapple with another American League Central team. The Cleveland Indians will be hosting. He bounced out his last time. First pitch to Weeders. Catcher can't control it. So they can't make the play. But Gary's to make the error right there. You just don't want to do that. It's just not good baseball. Holds up, but it's a called strike. Evens the count at one. Towards the middle. That's a base hit. Leaders on board. And Tejada will score. Baltimore, keep it going. They are. Well, the shutout broken up right there, but I tell you what, no shame in the performance he's given in this one. He's been outstanding. Well, even though they lost the last game, he had two big hits, and that's a good sign if you're the manager of this team that he's starting to swing the bat really well. Bedard gets set and delivers. And Tien with the catch. Uh, just having some difficulty right now trying to make up this ground. And, and obviously they've got a hill still to climb. And running out of time right now, only two outs remaining. So they've got to get something going and keep it going. And the first pitch. And Bernard has him 0 1. That one a called strike. Now that he's gotten the four seamer down and in, look for him to go outside now. Here's the delivery. Watches that one for a called strike. Nothing in two. I don't think he's going to waste any time right now. He's just going to go right at him with that 0 2 pitch. Swing and a miss on the fastball, second out the inning. Well, that's what you love to see from a pitcher setting guys down quickly, keeps that pitch count down. One, two, three. Can't ask for any more efficiency than that, John. Now an excellent pitch selection there. A runner on first with two outs. First pitch on the way. A line drive towards short. And Ramirez feels the ball. And on to first for out number three. And that's going to do it. But it went a great one here today, Gary. And it's all because of the pitching. Outstanding pitching really leading them to victory. Now look at our Pepsi Clutch performer. Your stand-up performance deserving of recognition. Well, you know, Gary, he made just that one mistake, but that doesn't tarnish the shine of this performance today. And I'll tell you what, the manager absolutely loves it when he doesn't have to go to the bullpen. He can give those guys a day off, and it makes them stronger for the remainder of the season. But I tell you, this guy was throwing strikes today, and it was an easy decision to keep him in the game. Steve, it seemed like they knew from the get-go they had it. This was going to be their day, and they were right. Now, you and I like the close games just because there's a little more intrigue for all nine innings, but the hometown fans, they like the offensive explosion and the big win. So, for Steve Phillips and John Crock, I'm Gary Thorne. Thank you for joining us, and we'll see you soon.